the most famous atheist of the last century, arguably, was Anthony Flew. Anthony Flew taught on atheism. By the way, he wrote a book, a landmark book called The Presumption of Atheism. And he taught on atheism at major universities all over Europe and the United States. Uh, wrote, what, 17 books. Um, just a, you know, one of the top, probably the, the, the top philosophic, philosophical atheist of his generation. So one day, I'm reading the New York Times a few years ago, and there on the front page it says, Anthony Flew, the greatest atheist in the universe, just said, oops, I was wrong. <laughs> Sorry. God, you know, exists. Now, I'm a skeptic. My background's in journalism and law. you got to prove it to me. And I thought the New York Times, I thought this was fake news. I thought this can't possibly be true. Because when I was an atheist, Anthony Flew was one of my heroes. So I tracked him down. And I sat him down. And I said, Dr. Flew, you're the, you were the greatest atheist of your generation. Fifty years you taught atheism. And now you say, oops, I was wrong? Tell me in one sentence why you changed your mind. And this is what he told me. He said, quote, he said, Lee, for one thing, it's the integrated complexity of the biological world. The exact kind of stuff we were just talking about. The integrated complexity of the biological world. He later wrote a book on this topic. Let me read to you his conclusion. He said, I now believe that the universe was brought into existence by an infinite intelligence. I believe that this universe's intricate laws manifest... By the way, that's cosmology right there, right? The universe was brought into existence by an infinite intelligence. Then he said, I believe that this universe's intricate laws manifest what scientists have called the mind of God. That's the physics evidence we talked about. He said, I believe that life and reproduction originate in a divine source. He said, why do I believe this? Given that I expounded and defended atheism for more than half a century? He said, the short answer is this. This is the world picture as I see it that has emerged from modern science. And I came to the same conclusion. I mean, I came to realize that if I were to maintain my atheism, I would need to believe that nothing produces everything, that non-life produces life, that randomness produces fine-tuning, that chaos produces information, that unconsciousness produces consciousness, and that non-reason produces reason. And friends, I just did not have enough faith to continue to believe.